We are America's tackle shop. Anything fishing related, it's here at Fish USA. Hey guys, Chad here for Kayak Bass Fishing. I'm here with Brandon from Fish USA, and we're going to talk today about Great Lakes smallmouth fishing. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn it over to Brandon and let him talk to you about some of the more popular techniques for fishing for smallmouth uh, in the Great Lakes region. And we're going to see how that translates to how I fish for smallmouth pretty much all over the country. So, so Brandon, talk to us about some of the more popular techniques for fishing for smallmouth in the Great Lakes. So I think right now one of the most popular techniques for Great Lakes smallmouth fishing is actually going to be the Ned Rig. It's a up and coming hot bait as you know and a lot of the guys are going to be using the Z-Man Elastec plastics, the TRDs, um, just on a Ned head. This is uh, the one that Z-Man actually makes. Um, it actually looks kind of like a big turd, Chad. It does. And so I'll be honest with you, you know, I hated fishing this thing. Fished with Eric Siddiqui in a little mock tournament. And I'm not going to lie, I'm going to tell you straight up what happened. I was falling behind and he was like ahead by about 40 inches in the middle of the day. And I went over and was like, dude, give me some of those Ned rigs. He gave me a couple of Ned rigs and a couple of Ned heads. And uh, one of the things that he was a big fan of is as light a head as you can get away with. Mm -hmm. So he was fishing these like one tenth ounce you know, um, lead heads and gave me a couple of them. And I went out there and I threw them out and started catching fish. So, you know, I'm not a real big fan of buying into a lot of the hype and a lot of the hoopla behind bait names and things along those lines, but they call this thing the finesse TRD and TRD. I used to say stands for turd because they literally look like a little dog turd, but what it really means is the real deal. And I have to, you know, admit they legitimately are the real deal and though i'm still not a fan of finesse fishing in general uh, if i'm going to finesse fish the the ned rig is definitely in the it's in the arsenal man it's one of yes, those sir. things where if you want to catch fish uh it has to be something that you have you know in your quiver so so go ahead and talk about it a little more so a lot of the guys are going to fish these in shallower water they're actually a good bait uh all time of the year um, and I like to fish it a little bit deeper than a lot of guys do, and I use a one-fifth ounce okay. size head, and that's actually going to be really big, but you can drop it and vertical jig on them. Mm -hmm. And if you had um, side imaging on your fish finder, it's lights out. It's like video game <clears throat> fishing. You know, and they make a thing called the hula stick as well. Yes, sir. And I fish that a lot because it just gives it a little, you know, appendages at the end or something for me that gives it a little bit more attraction. But this thing is so deadly, you throw it out and it hits the bottom. And it, it just catches fish. You know, some of them, because of this Z-Man Elastic, this is buoyant, so it sticks up off the bottom. Uh, if you barely move it, you can see there how much action it has. So it's crazy effective. And you look at some of the colors, and you're like, that's not going to catch fish. That's bubble gum, and it catches fish. Yep. You look at the chartreuse and, and green pumpkin mix, and you say to yourself, really? And then it catches fish. The, honestly, they all catch fish. My favorite color uh, is like the minnow color, you know, the yeah. kind of the gray smoke back with the, the pearl belly, and that thing does really well. And a lot of times you throw it out and you're letting it fall on the slack line, it doesn't even make it to the bottom, yep. especially on a lighter uh, head, on a little bit heavier line, you know, 10, 12 pound fluorocarbon, it kind of falls through the water column and it looks like a minnow. And it's a lot like a Cinco as it's going down, it's got that action to it and they just flat, they flat murder it. So yeah, you can't beat the, uh, the TRD, they actually are the real deal. What's up next? So the other um, Great Lakes smallmouth technique that a lot of guys have been using for years is actually a tube. Um, a lot of guys fish this in deeper water around rock piles and different uh, submerged structure way out in the lake. Um, and this is more, for me, a vertical jigging uh, technique on the Great Lakes. I know a lot of guys flip tubes into mats and that sort of thing. Um, but this smoke purple color, I think, has produced a lot more fish for me than any other rig I think I've used tube-wise. Yeah, I'm a big green pumpkin fan, but I do fish the natural, you know, uh, bait fish colors. I fish a, a tube, shallow, deep, you know, mm -hmm. fast, slow. I actually reel it, and it looks like a, a little bait fish. But all right, Brandon, so let me show you a little modification that I like to do. I've talked about this in a lot of videos. Uh, I mentioned it in my book, but I've never really like actually shown how to do it. So you basically just take your, your skirted tube, you turn it upside down and get the kind of the appendages to fold back and you just hold them back out of the way. And then what you do is you take these earplugs 
And what's cool about this type is you can trim them to get the amount of buoyancy that you want. You can trim them to adjust your fall rate. Uh, and you can trim them to the size of the tube. All you have to do is take a pair of scissors or a knife and just cut off as much as you want. So I'm going to show you how to do it with the full tube or the full um, earplug. What you do is you roll these things and they get real skinny when you roll them up just like that. And then what I like to do is after I roll them up, just kind of like when you're tying a knot in the fishing line, you just salivate on it so it gets down in there nice and easy. So you can stop it about halfway. And a lot of times it even creates a little bit of an attraction right there. But if it doesn't make its way in, it's no problem. You just roll it again and then you just force it inside the tube. And then what that does is that gives you an anchor point to put your hook in if you want and it keeps it in there nice and neat. But more than that, what it's gonna do, and again, it keeps kind of working its way out. So you're gonna roll that thing up and that's why you wanna salivate on it and just kind of push it in quicker instead of sitting there talking about it. But you can work it back into the tube pretty much wherever you want it to be to give you the buoyancy um, and the fall rate and the angle that you're looking for. And so what I like to do is rig it, put a rattle inside there, maybe put a little scent and it traps it inside. And then what happens is when you throw this thing out, it slows the fall rate a little bit, but when it hits, it stands up because you've got that earplug inside the bait. And when that thing stands up and you jiggle it and then tentacles move, when I do it with the earplug, I like to take these skirts and trim them off about half the size. Um, about 95% of the time. Sometimes I leave them long, but I like to trim it off so that those tentacles are up there and they just barely move. And when you hop that thing, it just comes alive. And for bed fishing, you know, if you're into that, you can throw this thing out on the bed and when the fish swims up to it, just the fact that they're moving their peck fins and creating these little eddies in the water, when it hits that thing, it just brings it to life and it makes them attack it. So, you know, one little trick for rigging your tubes is take these standard gun range earplugs or, you know, job safety earplugs and uh, roll them up, stick them inside the tube, and you can change the, the action, the presentation. Pretty much you can change everything about fishing the tube, and it is flat. It's one of those tips I almost didn't want to share for years. It's so good. It's so juicy. And then um, you can use these things over and over and over, and they just work great. So a little standard ear earplug works great. And then these also pull double duty. If you're home and you're sitting in the living room, and uh, you don't want to listen to somebody, you just roll them up and stick them in your ears and you actually use them as, as earplugs. <laughs> and just, when you see their mouth moving, just nod, shake your head, give a thumbs up, and they just, they think you're listening. Anyway. Okay, Brandon, so moving right along, talk to us about another popular Great Lakes smallmouth technique. Another popular technique a lot of guys are going to be using are these jerk baits. Um, if you have suspending bait fish any, in any region that you're fishing, these are going to be awesome because you can get this to go two to four feet. Mm -hmm. And some of the deeper diving jerk baits are going to go up to eight feet. And you can just Even whack. deeper, to be honest with you. Yeah. Do, how much do you fish a jerk bait? Not, Not often. What? Not often. All right, so give me that bait for a second. So let me talk to you about jerk baits. Fish them. Okay, I did a video a couple weeks ago. I'll link up to it in the description box called Don't Be a Jerk. And I think these really should be called pause baits, right? And mm -hmm. the reason being is I think they're as effective paused, if not more effective paused, than they are on the jerk, right? Obviously, you have to jerk them to pause them, but I think it should be called a pause bait. That way, people understand that you have to pause them. That's part of it. That being said, though, you can just steadily reel those baits. You don't have to jerk them. You can reel them and then pause and then reel and then pause. But, man, I'm just going to tell you, 12 months out of the year, border to border, coast to coast, river fishing, lake fishing, whether it's reservoirs, natural lakes, ponds, I fish a jerk bait all the time. If you catch me without a jerk bait in my boat, reach over by my beard and start pulling to see if the skin comes off because there's an imposter imitating me. If I am bass fishing, I have a jerk bait. I think it is one of those things that is probably, I'm not going to say it's the one of the best kept secrets out there, but I know pros that fish a jerk bait at times that they don't say they fish a jerk bait. I know really accomplished anglers that this is one of the best tools in their arsenal. Again, you can crawl it through slow water, you know, slowly through shallow water. Uh, you can bump it along rocks on the bottom of a river. You can actually throw it out, let it drift and just pull, just mend your line and drift it through holes and rivers. And I'll tell you something else that I do. And when I say this, people are legitimately going to think I'm crazy. I Carolina rig a jerk bait on a regular basis. And so what happens is you tie a little short leader or a long leader, depending, but usually a short leader. Uh, and you've heard of the concept of long lining? Yeah. So if I've got a grass bed where the grass is only a foot off the bottom, I'll tie a three foot litter, leader. If I've got zebra mussels, I'll double my knot going through 
go to some heavier braid. I'll throw it out past the bed, back up, back paddle, open my bell up, turn around with the torpedo and run away, bring my line straight and then work that thing. Snap, snap, reel it down, snap, snap. And that bait's gonna hit that weight and that bead's gonna click. That bait's gonna jerk down and it's gonna slowly rise. But then that Carolina rig's gonna keep it just off the bottom. And dude, you can give line back and it'll rise up a little more. And then you can pull it back down and just, oh, and especially if you've got a school of fish on the depth finder, ledge fishing. Ledge fishing on Kentucky Lake, I, I freaking Carolina rig these things all the time. And it's something that I don't really talk about. I've never done a video about it. I guess I need to, but it is deadly. If you are not fishing a jerk bait as a bass fisherman, especially smallmouth, you are wrong. That's all I'm going to say to you. Add that to your arsenal. Yes, sir. And fish that thing more and more. And honestly, you can get to the point where you focus on becoming a jerk bait fisherman by taking nothing else. Spend two weeks in the spring just fishing with nothing but jerk baits. It'll build your confidence in them. And guys, listen, I don't do this often. It's kind of like the school teacher. Like when they're telling you, when they knock on the desk, they're telling you that that's going to be on the test. <laughs> if you want to become an accomplished bass fisherman, you have to have jerk baits in your arsenal. So anyway. All right, Brandon. So it looks like you've saved the best for last or something that at least I know you fish a lot yep. last. So go ahead and talk to us about your next, you know, your next presentation. Probably your favorite, right? Yeah, this is my absolute favorite bait to fish anywhere I'm fishing. It's going to be a Kytec swim bait. And I rigged this up on a um, three aught gum got to ball head jig. Ball head jig. Yeah. And the reason I actually use a ball head jig compared to like an Arky style jig head mm -hmm. is because I have more control with a spinning rod over that ball head jig when I'm fishing rock piles. Now, I'll be honest with you, I fish this, these swim baits probably 75% of the time, Texas rigged. I've got a bullet weight in front of it with a weedless. Um, hook, you know, like a big mouth tube hook from Mustad or, you know, a, a grip pin hook or something along those lines. So I can steady reel it. I can drop my rod tip and let it fall and the weight gets to the bottom first and the, the lure follows it behind. But um, I hooked up with some guys when I was fishing um, on Table Rock and they were fishing nothing but ball head jigs, throwing it up on these rocky banks and hopping it along. We caught more smallmouth that day than probably any day I've ever fished as far as numbers goes. Um, it's not that I had never fished a ball head jig, but I had never spent the time to build the confidence in it. Felt like it was going to hang up more than it actually did. And then even when I did hang up, I just paddle around to the other side, pull it out. And man, I'm going to tell you, those things are deadly effective. They work great in open water. They actually work pretty good around wood, believe it or yeah. not. And so for me, <laughs> if I'm fishing open water and if I'm fishing the bait faster moving, and honestly, even when I'm fishing clear water, I really like that bait because I can move it a little faster. It's wiggling back and forth, so the hook's kind of camouflage. But when they hit it, they're hooked. They're literally hooked as soon as they hit it. So. so when I'm not getting a lot of bites on this bait, and this is by far has been my biggest confidence bait that I throw, I actually dip the tail um, in a dip and die. Okay. And I've noticed that when you dip the tail in a dip and die, when the bite is tough, mm -hmm. changes the game. Changes the game for sure. So. You know, and I'll tell you one thing that I came up with just messing around, but you can actually take these these ball head jigs and you can rig these swim baits up. Um, you know, and this is a Kytec, but there's, you know, Seismic, uh, Strike King, Rage Tail Swimmers are probably my favorite because they're a little harder in the yeah. front, but they still have good action. Uh, these ribbed soft body swim baits are great. But one of the things you can do with these ball head jigs, you kind of got to line it up with the bait so you know where to come out and then pinch it with your finger is you can actually go down into the bait and come out a little further than you normally would. And then what you do is you salivate on the ball head jig and you push the bait up over the top of it, just like so. Okay, see what I'm doing here? Yeah. I'm treating this a lot like a tube. And then what you do is you pull that eye out, just yep. like that. And so when you mentioned vertically jigging them, so now you got your line tie on the top and you drop that thing down and it swims to the bottom and when it hits, it sits up, okay? Yep. You know, when it hits on the bottom, it sits up just like that. And you can kind of scoot it or you can just kind of Demiki rig style yeah. fish it. Just kind of bump it along the bottom. But I have found that if I've got a finicky biter from fishing in clear water, you just push that head over the top of that ball like that and tie directly to the top. Something else that it does is it opens up the head, right? It tears the head when you put that ball through there and it creates a slit. So now what happens is when you reel that in straight, a straight retrieve, it searches. It, it makes that bait kind of run irregular. So it'll search off to the side and that tail takes over and it, and so it just gives it a little bit more of an erratic action and it's flat deadly. But here's the real reason I came up with it. 
So when you, I have a big concept I call rebating. Rebates when you get your money back, mm -hmm. right? So if you take a bait that's torn up and you use it again, you got a rebate, right? You got more money out of it. So when I rig these normally and they get torn up where the head's torn up, now I just rig the ball head a little deeper and then I fish that. And then when it gets so torn up that it's even torn up for using it that way, then you cut it off and use it as a chatterbait trailer, yeah. swim jig trailer or something along those lines. But that right there has produced a lot of fish for me. And in the river, when you throw it out there, it just, the action's a little better. I think what happens is that grip from that thing catches and it makes it nose up a little bit and then you hop it and it catches and it, no it just is one of those little tricks that I came up with. It changes the profile, it changes the action, uh, and it really increases the hookup ratio. So just something to think about. All right, man. So what else you got right here? Because I said that's the last one, but it looks like we've got a little bit of stuff here that we didn't talk about. So what, it, what, what, is, the, what is the most popular technique for fishing for dummies is what I call it. It's some, it's, yeah. It is deadly effective. It's one of those things that I'm not a real, it's just like the Ned Rig. It's one of those things that I'm not as big a fan of doing, but when you do it, it's deadly effective. And so that's going to be your typical drop shot so, rig. <laughs> All right. So when you when you're doing a drop shot rig, especially in clear water, you know one of the big things is to use as thin a diameter um, and a premium fluorocarbon as you can. So for, for this particular setup, we're using FC Sniper from Sunline. You know I've used a lot of different uh, fluorocarbons over the years. I've been a big fan of Cigar most of my adult life had no reason to experiment with anything else until I was on the road, ran out of the leader material that I was looking for, went to a little shop in Arkansas and all they had was sunline. And the lady that worked there was like, man, you don't know what you're missing if you ain't fishing that sunline. And I thought it was just a sales tactic, but I didn't have much of a choice. So I picked some up, tied it on. And it's honestly some of the best knot tying that I've ever seen. It's definitely a premium fluorocarbon. So we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull some of this off of here. We're gonna set up a drop shot rig. So a lot of people show you a drop shot rig and then they just show you it already rigged. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from scratch and pretty much let uh, Brandon just kind of set it up. So Brandon, walk us through setting up a drop shot rig. So you have your line here and I actually use a um, smaller hook for this, okay. um, for the drop shot, and then you take your line. So what size hook is that and what's the, this, the manufacturer? This uh, um, is a owner mosquito hook and this okay. is a size four. Um, okay. I like the mosquito hooks actually because they have a little bit of a yep. arced out yep. bend like mm -hmm. that. Now when he says size four, he means number four, not yep. four aught. There's yep. numbers and then there's aughts and the numbers are smaller. So you'll create a... So basically just went through the eye and came back through with the tag in to create a loop. Create a loop. And then you'll take your loop and essentially run your hook through it. And now you're just doubling it up. And then you just double it up. Cool. And then make sure that it folds over the eye of the hook, not yep. up on the shaft. So that's the biggest problem, um, is if it doesn't go onto the eye of the hook, that's when you'll have some issues. And so from there, all Brandon is doing is basically making a triple overhand mm -hmm. knot, basically just to lock it in place. Going back through the eye, similar to making a cinch knot, a clinch knot, I should say. Cool. Should be good. Yeah, so basically you go through the eye and back through, take that loop and go over the hook, not making a loop like a Palomar, and then after it goes through, you just do a triple wrap around the line, back through the eye, cinch it down a lot like a clinch knot. And so if you have this, you can kind of work with it if um, it's standing up too much and it's hitting your line and that sort of thing. Yeah, because you can tweak it. Yeah, you can tweak it a little bit. You can basically take it and, and while you've got the line out, you can yep. just kind of change the angle mm -hmm. and you can dial it into exactly what you want. All right, so what's next? So I prefer a round, so I actually throw drop shots around docks, um, wood structure and that sort of thing. And I actually use a ball um, drop shot weight. There's two styles, um, a ball and a pencil weight. Mm -hmm. The ball seems to work better around certain structures. That way it doesn't get um, hung up as easy. Mm -hmm. um, as to where like if you're using a pencil style weight, it's better in rock piles out deep. Um, and that way it doesn't get stuck. But. And you just run your line through there and it actually cinches on there. And so for me, I'm a big fan of drop shot setups. Uh, I use them a lot more 
uh, outside of the concept of drop shotting. I like to flip them, call them a flip shot, where you flip them up on the other side of a bed or flip them up near wood and just keeps the bait in the strike mm -hmm. zone, especially during off-peak times. Um, the system that I use is from a company called Wu Tungsten, and uh, Fish USA just uh, began stocking them, and so you definitely got to check out Wu's um, drop shot system. They've got the cylinder weights, they've got the ball weights, uh, their entire tungsten line is phenomenal, and I'm a big fan of premium tungsten. It gives you a lot more feel, gives you, it translates into a lot better, uh, you know, bottom composition detection. You can tell what's going on. And so with these ball weights, really all you have to do is you put the line through there and cinch it. A lot of people tie a knot in there just to keep it from slipping, but the idea is if it gets hung up and you pull on it, that sacrifices itself, and you don't have to retire your entire rig. And so yep. that's the idea uh, behind it. Uh, you can get away with lead. Lead works. I'm a big fan of tungsten. It's a little more expensive, but that feel and that translation and the more compact weight to get it to the bottom faster. The idea behind drop shotting is you're getting it to the bottom mm -hmm. fast. And so just whatever tickles your fancy, but that's the setup right there. So basically, you've got your weight on the bottom, come up whatever distance you want to off the bottom. And a lot of people think that the drop shot action comes from the pull, but really what it is is you're pinpoint fishing, getting the lure in place by dropping the weight and then what i like to do is drop the drop my rod tip and it allows that lure to flutter and so for me i'm actually fishing the lure on the fall yep. and on the flutter now you can put it out and do the drop shake where you just twick it you know just twitch it and get it actually let's throw the lure on there yeah get this thing to jiggle and shake and dance and you know it really is deadly So what he's got here is one of the uh, KVD Strike King Perfect Plastics. I'm going to pack real quick. Yep. And so these little Perfect plastic setups, this is a drop shot half shell. These things are one of my favorites, man. So the way you rig these is basically they've got a flat side and a, and a ribbed side. And I like to come in just behind the nose and come out through the top if there's no grass or no cover or anything like that that I'm worried about. And I really like the mosquito hooks like you talked yep. about because the, the hook kind of sticks off to the side. The other thing you can do is you can go inside the head, just like this. You can basically come in and you can keep it to where the head doesn't stick out or the tip of the hook doesn't stick out. And that'll give you some, you know, some, some, uh, that'll give you some weedlessness when you're fishing in grass. It's going to inhibit the hook set a little bit, but that's something that I use uh, quite a bit. But I'm going to show you how I fish it primarily. I come right through the tip of the nose. Again, you're wanting to give this thing as much action uh, as you possibly can. And so, you know, you've got, you're going to have to imagine that this is a little more buoyant, but when you drop your rod tip, that thing just kind of flutters and swings to the bottom. And then when you hop it up, I come back to a taut line almost always, and I let it sit there for a second. I hold it taut, and I drop my rod tip and twitch, twitch, and then let it fall. And a lot of times I'll even just let it sit on the bottom for just mm -hmm. a second because, you know, you're bottom fishing, and so these fish are, are, are definitely – you know, interested in the bait, they've seen it, you've got their attention, you've dropped it, and a lot of times I just let it sit there. But what I was talking about is I like a flick shake. I like to drop it out there, yep. and when that bait catches, now I'm using that weight to hold it just up off the bottom. And uh, a lot of you guys might be too young to remember the Domino's commercials with the avoid the noid, but if you wouldn't mind going over there and holding that weight, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. You can get this thing just off the bottom and kind of just barely pull it till it catches on something. Just hold it down on the, on the thing. Yeah, like, so it's caught on something now. And I like to take my rod tip, hold my rod tip up at about 1 o'clock, 11 o'clock, depending on how you're looking at it, and then take my finger on the line, and I just jiggle it like that. So you can just imagine what that bait's doing. There's a little more resistance in the water, so it's going to flutter and flop. And I'll just twick it, twick it. And sometimes I just get it on a semi-taut line and just do that right there. You know, that little quiver, that little death quiver, man. It drives them crazy. So again, you're just holding your rod tip up. You you kind of pull it along to that weight catches on something, and you just jiggle it. And you can do the exact same thing when you're vertically fishing. You drop that thing down, and instead of actually moving your rod, you can actually just take your line and jiggle it. Right. So yep. imagine that this is the rod right here. Okay. And I'm just gonna I'm just jiggling that, and it really brings that bait alive. And man, when you've got a moderate action drop shot rod, that tip of that rod's flexing every, every time you pull that, and it's just in their face. So it's a lot like the Domino's commercial with the avoid the noid, that thing that's like, hey, nah. you know, it's going, it's just in their face. It's irritating them. I like when I know where fish are, but they're not biting. Drop this thing down there and just put it right in their face and just jiggle it, 
dart it, twitch it, and just basically create an irritation or a reaction bite. So, anyway. Well, man, what else you got? That's all I have for you, That's Chad? it, brother. Yep. So, there it is. There are your Great Lakes primary smallmouth targeting techniques. We talked about, you know, the way Brandon fish them. I threw some of the stuff in there that I do that works all over the country. I'm excited to get back up here this year and put some of these theories to the test and try a little bit more kayak fishing with this guy. So one of the great things about my relationship with Fish USA is I get to work with a company that has people that work for the company that fish, that understand fishing. If you call here and you get customer service, you're going to get an angler. You're going to get somebody that understands fishing. And, uh, you know, I'm going to get back up here and fish with this guy. I'm looking forward to expanding my horizons and fishing for some more Great Lake species. But I'm also looking forward to getting up here and fishing for some of these plump, brown, bronze back, just, just cantaloupe, football, pumpkin, mm, just brown gold, man, just brown gold. There's no anyway. words for it. <laughs> Whew. I just got a little pea shiver thinking about it. So anyway, I'll see y'all in the next video.